We're living longer lives, but with more years in poor health than at any point in history. How can we change this? And what are the pharma industry's responsibilities and opportunities? These questions and many more will we, MSD, try to answer together with people of different perspectives by creating a space for dialogue. We hope to promote diversity of opinions and provide food for thoughts. We call it Voices of Pharma. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of Voices of Pharma. My name's Julie Willingham, and I'm joined today by Annika Sabo Portella, the Managing Director of EIT Health Scandinavia. Annika, welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, and I really look forward to an interesting discussion. So we're going to talk uh, a little bit more in a moment about the principles of high value care, but uh, maybe in uh, to get us into the subject, you could just tell us what the areas of focus for EIT Scandinavia are. Yes, so we uh, work uh, cross borders in Europe. And the mission is to improve healthcare systems, but also with the healthcare economic perspective in that. So one could say that we try together with our partners and stakeholders to speed up implementation of innovation in healthcare. And uh, the purpose of that is that we all should live longer, healthier lives. So Annika, when we talk about high value care, um, let's kind of ground everybody in a basic understanding of what we mean by that. Uh, maybe you could just tell us in terms of EIT in your own perspective, what does that mean? Yes, so for me, uh, high value care refers to the restructuring of healthcare delivery towards measurable outcomes. We have talked about that, that have high impact and matter most to patients, but also to the healthcare providers now. And uh, this is also then a way to um, make sure that healthcare sector pay for the outcomes rather than the service volume delivered. And what do I mean with this? If we look at healthcare today, uh, a hospital or a clinic more or less get paid from the number of patients that come to the clinic, to the hospital, the number of treatments. Uh, high value care would like this shift to be that why not instead have financial incentives if the patients do not come? Because we actually invest in prevention, we make sure they don't need to use uh, a hospital stay, mm -hmm. or if they need care, maybe it's better for them to get that care in home setting, and it's also cheaper. So it's about the patients, but it's also about the healthcare providers, and it's shifting the payment model. So Annika, you mentioned incentives in the definition of high value care, and that makes me think of payment for results. Um, how do you see that we can move towards that? Well, we need to get started because today I don't think that we are good at uh, measuring end results and how things are going for the individual, the patient and society for real. And uh, just as an example, today, if you have an Alzheimer uh, patient and he gets uh, prescribed uh, a uh, digital aid, for example, you tick the box, uh, you get paid for that in the system. Uh, but regardless if this uh, technical aid actually helped the patients in, in daily life. So it's really about the shift. It's not just the care that is given without taking into perspective or listening to if it really helped or if the patient actually had requested something else. So it's an extraordinarily important uh, question because it's really a shift in how we look upon uh, financing healthcare. And the outcome that matters most to patients is really central. But today, that's not how you finance healthcare. So obviously, in terms of why uh, high uh, value care is important, it's all about the patient and the payer. But uh, maybe you can tell us a bit about the High Value Care Forum 
and how that links to that ambition? Yeah, because you asked me also what uh, what is EIT Health and what we focus on. And uh, obviously, if you want to change healthcare, uh, work towards that, that's very broad. So we are currently having uh, focus areas. We happen to call them flagships. And high value care is one, but we are also uh, focusing a lot now topical in Europe with the European health data space. So health data is mm. uh, uh, also of great importance. So this is always with the patient in uh, focus. So high value care for us is to strive towards the kind of outcomes that really matters to patients the most. I think for a company like MSD where we're, we're obviously very interested in data sharing, um, but the outcomes that you need to look at from on one hand a population-based intervention to the other, something for a very specific orphan drug space, it's quite different. So um, what do you think those technical infrastructure needs would be given that enormous diversity, that enormous range of needs? I would ask the question back to you because here <laughs> I think that pharma sits on a lot of uh, knowledge and expertise and your advantage is the vast amount of data, but also data on uh, big populations, but, but stratified. Because if we look into healthcare, it's not always we get that kind of clean data. It's, it's, it's mixed. So here I would very much welcome a dialogue from healthcare. How can we do this? And what can we learn from pharma that is actually already doing this? And then we have the ecosystem then of startups in between that today might have difficulties getting access to from data from hospitals as well as, as from pharma. But could we use then a common uh, standard and a common infrastructure platforms for that? I think we would really start also to be competitive in Europe. So this is the fundamentals also with this mm -hmm. initiative of the uh, European health data space to have interoperability to have data that actually is both accessible but then um, usable for different types of uh, uses. And that's obviously really important as we sit here in uh, the Scandinavian or Nordic as we call it from an MSD perspective because we have such rich data set sets available and so I think that um, having this infrastructure to allow us to share that data is something we're very interested in collaborating over. We've talked a lot about uh, all the benefits of uh, pushing uh, the ecosystem towards high value care, but do you see any potential pitfalls or, or do you have any concerns of areas that we need to look out for? Yes, there are. Uh barriers and pitfalls that we are then working on. And uh, we have mentioned a, a, a few, few of them, but really important ones. So it's health data fragmentation. It's multiple con conditions for data use. It's also limited access for um, users to uh, get hold of good quality data. and. Foremost, I would also come back to the lack of legal and regulatory framework for secondary use of data. This is what the uh, European Health Data Space Initiative is working on. But even with new framework, new regulation, it's a huge effort to make all these systems actually interconnect. And it's also a question of important investments. So who is going to pay for all this to happen? But I think a driver is that if we don't do this, we would lag after in, in Europe. And I would also see this as a harmonization cross borders to be able to use health data as very much needed because the backside, if we don't do it, and we see it already today. We have uh, SME startups, but also bigger companies rather looking towards other markets. They mm. go to the US or they go to Asia because it's so complicated 
and fragmentized uh, in Europe. So it's more attractive to go elsewhere. So it's an investment that we need to keep our assets here. We are on the way and it's a, a collaborative effort that we will have to do. Uh, it's something that the European Commission is, you know, leading the way. Uh, but I think in the end that uh, um, we all like this to happen also, to feel that it's a, a, a competitive but also a, a market of interest for us, you know, health-wise also. I, I would like to get my, my care here. We are uh, a little bit in the beginning of it and huge investments and efforts are still to, to, to come. If you allow me, I think one reflection here is also that we know that um, implementing change in healthcare is slow mm. uh, compared to, to other sectors. Naturally, uh, we know also why that is. But here I think we could learn from, from other uh, sectors. And for example, the finance or the bank sector went through something similar just a few mm -hmm. years ago. And today we have all sorts of payment systems that speak to each other and you can transfer money and take loans on the phone wherever you are. So I think we could look into that kind of technological solutions that others have been uh, using, but also what spurred, you know, the speed in the implementation. Mm -hmm. So here, I think it's also the beauty of innovation, though, that you uh, have a look what others are doing and maybe get on working with those that you usually don't do. Very wise. So Annika, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us and uh, join us again for the next episode of Voices of Pharma soon. <laughs>